I really love Craigslist. I'd estimate I've met maybe 300 people for buying and selling stuff. And for the most part, everyone was nice and harmless. However, I did run into two creeps who made me rethink meeting strangers alone to sell stuff. For your information, I was an early 20s female at the time. First guy, it's 2009, and I'm staying with my parents for Christmas holidays in a small town in Florida. I'm going through my childhood room and I'm cleaning out the closet where I find a giant CD holder full of maybe 100 really shitty CDs. I think Nickelback, Aqua, Chumbawumba. It's the 21st century. No one uses CDs anymore. So I'd figured I'd try to sell the CDs on Craigslist. I put up a listing. 100 CDs from the late 90s and early to mid 2000s. Mix of pop and rock. All for 35 OBO. The next day, I get an email from a guy named John around 2 p.m. He says that he's in my town temporarily and that he wants the CDs. He says he can pick them up after dinner around 8 p.m. I email him back my address and number, and then I tell him to text or call when he's on his way. 8 p.m. comes and goes. I figure I've been stood up, which happens often on Craigslist. It's not really a big deal. My dad works for a liquor distribution company and he would often do demonstration nights at restaurants and bars and he wouldn't come home at bar closing time. This night he gets home at around 3 a.m. I'm in college and so I'm a total night owl so I'm still up probably eating junk food, surfing the web and watching horror flicks. I hear a car pull up, look out the window and I see him sitting in his car eating food. He often stops at Taco Bell on his way home and eats in his car so my mom doesn't know he's cheating on his diet. Maybe 10 or so minutes later, my dad comes in and shouts my name. Pizza Succubus, there's someone here to see you. Can you please tell me why strange man is showing up at our house and at 3 a.m.? Huh? I go downstairs and my dad says some guy pulled up in the driveway and asked for me by name. I walk outside with my dad and this guy who was maybe mid-30s gets out of his car. He says he's the Craigslist guy who wanted to buy my CDs. My dad goes back in the house. I tell the guy it's really really late to just be stopping by, especially without texting first. However, since I'm awake, I go and grab the CDs. He then proceeds to drone on and on about why he's buying the CDs. He says he's engaged to a woman he loves very much, and all he wants to do is make her happy. He said that last week, someone broke into her car and stole all of her CDs. She was really upset, and he wanted to make it up to her. He looked on Craigslist and found my listing, and was really excited because I had a bunch of the CDs she used to have. Weird thing is, I didn't list any of the artists or bands because I was lazy, but I didn't think about it at the time. Anyway, he said he was getting it for her Christmas as a surprise. He said he was staying with his future in-law somewhere nearby and that their family barbecue ran really late, which is why he never made it at 8pm. By this point, I've lost interest and say something along the lines of, that's sweet. Next time, you should probably call or text the Craigslister instead of just showing up. I hand him the CDs, he hands me the cash, and I go back inside. Three days later, I start getting texts from an unknown number. Hey, I don't know my way around this town. Care to tour guide me? I could really use a massage. Where can I get a massage in this town? You're Asian. Do you do massage? Would you take $40 for an hour massage? Happy ending? Me, I finally say, Who the hell is this? He says, Oh, sorry, I bought the CDs from you the other day. Do you squirt? I didn't respond, obviously. I show my friends that night, and we laugh it off. Then the next day, I get more text messages. I still have your address. I'm at the Bank of America near your neighborhood. I just got $40, babe. Only three minutes away. Are you home? Stop ignoring me. I'm almost there. I immediately ran downstairs to tell my dad and mom. It was night time so we shut off all the lights outside and inside my house. 
My mom, little brother, and I went into my parents' room in the back of the house. My dad hid behind the curtains of the front bay window with a shovel in his hand. A few minutes later, I heard him run down the front hallway as he flung the front door open and run outside. We heard some faint shouting, so we all walked out of his bedroom. By that time, my dad had come back with his shovel, his face red, and his hair all disheveled. Apparently, the guy came driving down our street really slowly. My dad recognized the car and went running outside with the shovel, yelling obscenities at the guy. The guy peeled off and never came back or texted me again. Second guy. I was moving from Florida to DC and I was going to load up my car as much as I could with stuff. However, I lived on the third floor, plus a bit of a walk from my assigned parking spot so I figured I could use some help. I posted an ad on Craigslist gigs. I said I was looking for someone to help me load some heavy items. Things like TV, desk, etc. Less than an hour's worth of work, I would pay $45 or whatever. I give the very first responder my number and address, and he shows up. He was probably 5'8 and 350 pounds of pure fat. The sweat and smell coming off of this guy in the Florida heat was pretty nauseating, but I didn't care as long as he did the job right. While he was carrying heavy stuff, I was loading lighter things myself. Whenever I'd go upstairs to grab another load, he'd hurry after me so he could walk up the stairs behind me. I had the door propped open, so he didn't have to worry about my needing to unlock the door for him or anything. But when he'd follow me up the stairs, he made these weird grunting noises, but I assumed it was because he was out of shape. Eventually, everything's loaded properly, save for some sweat smears on my stuff. I pay him, and he drives off. I go back in my place to finish loading and cleaning. I go out maybe 45 minutes later to put another load in my car, and I see his truck is back, and it's parked across the street from mine. He's sitting in the driver's seat looking at me, when he sees me notice him, he looks away. I then walk over to his window and knock. He rolls it down, and I ask if he needs any help or if he was lost. I was really confused as to why he'd come back, and I knew he didn't live near me. He didn't say anything though, just rolled his window back up and drove off. Well, okay, whatever. Of course, five minutes later, my phone starts blowing up. I don't recognize the number, so I don't answer the calls. Then the texts start rolling in. Him. I bet you taste salty and sweet. Who is this? What are you up to tonight? Can I come back over? I get this sinking feeling it's the Craigslist guy. He had never called me about the job when I gave him my number, so I didn't know what his number was. I like your pink panties. Then I realized he was looking up my dress when I was walking up the stairs. I immediately feel like a total idiot for wearing a dress that day. He then started dialing my number over and over again, but I didn't know how to do the block number thing through Sprint, so I had to just turn my phone off. Later, I was with my guy friend grabbing a bite, and I turned my phone back on. I got another text from the guy about how he had wanted to toss me around like a rag doll, and also to tie me up and make me beg for it. I show the text to my friend and I tell him this story. The Craigslist creep then proceeds to start blowing up my phone again. So my friend answers and says he's going to cut his dick off and feed it to his dog if he ever contacts me again. I moved the next day so I never had to worry about him randomly showing up in his truck again. Since then, I've bought and sold stuff on Craigslist but I always make people meet me at a public place. I also stalk people's email addresses. Google Plus accounts, etc. Hey there, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you are brand new around here and you want to hear more creepy stories, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it. That way you can be notified of any and all future videos coming here to the Creepy Fox. But with that said, let's get back to the scary stories. My roommate V was always at her boyfriend's place, so I was essentially living alone in a two-bedroom apartment. 
Also, my friend Esme was crashing with me while looking for her own place. She found a place nearby renting a big bedroom with attached bathroom, female only, and it was for way cheap. We checked out the Google Street View on my laptop and it looked like a cute little beach house. She rode her bike over to check it out alone. The house was right by the beach and tons of people are always around so we thought nothing of it. She said it was two beach type white guys, a young disheveled stoner guy and a middle aged parrot head guy that would close talk while giving her obvious elevator eyes the whole time. She's a pretty petite Mexican girl and was 21 years old but looked younger. The older guy kept saying she was just what they were looking for, kinda slowly in what she described as an uber creepy voice. The younger guy just stared and followed them around. She thought it was odd they each slept in the tiny guest rooms and were renting out the main bedroom, but I decided to take a look at it anyway. She said it was a really nice room, with a big heavy wooden four-poster bed in the middle of the room. It looked like it belonged in a castle, and the bathroom had a huge shower with multiple shower heads on the walls. It was like it was built for a bunch of people to shower at once. She didn't like being in this back bedroom with the two guys looming over her, so she said it was really stuffy and she wanted to make sure her unlocked bike in the front yard was okay. She all but ran to the front yard, and once she was outside with a bystander, she felt so much better. She's standing in the front yard with the older guy, and he's explaining that she can move in right away, but the bed has to stay exactly where it is. It comes with the room and is bolted to the floor, so it can't actually be moved. And they have special sheets for it and everything, so she can bring all her stuff, but can never move that bed. Also, she can have friends over, but only if they're also young women or girls, no men, and they can sleep over, but also need to sleep in the bed. The hardwood floor was just too uncomfortable. The couches in the living room are swayed, so no one can sleep on them. All these reasons why a big pile of girls need to sleep on the bed. So she sufficiently creeped out by this guy and texts me to come over. I ride my bike over, and as I'm pulling up, she's leaving. We start to ride a little way, and he yells out after us. It's mandatory, but we always have a blast. She kind of shudders and I ask her what's up. She says she'll tell me over drinks, so we ride to the nearest little beach bar. She explains about the room, the bed, the guys, and then tells me part of the deal is a mandatory skiing trip to Lake Tahoe in North California each year. She can invite girls on the trip that have been to the house before if the guys think they're cool enough. It's free for her and her girlfriends, but mandatory that she go with the guys as their official woman. There would be other men there, but they all brought their own women. He said it's like the women would be assigned to them or something. So our minds start racing and we convince ourselves that the bedroom and trip are some elaborate webcam slash BDSM situation or something. Needless to say, she never moved in there or took them up on their free ski weekend offer. V ended up moving in with her boyfriend, and Esme moved in with me for a couple of years. She was an awesome roommate. Okay, so here goes. In early 2014, I was 18 years old, and I started browsing the world of Craigslist. I responded to an ad in the personal section, and I started texting this woman. Now being 18 unfamiliar with how Craigslist works, I didn't see an issue with her meeting up at a red roof. I also didn't see anything wrong with her asking for donations. Again, 18 and stupid. I figured donation meant optional. Again, stupid I know, but just to be clear, she never gave me a price nor did I tell her I had money for her. So I set up a time to meet her. I left my house to head to my GED class as usual, but walked to the red roof instead. It was pouring rain and it was warm out, so by the time I got there I was all drenched and sweaty. I knocked on the room door she was in and she answered. Her attire should have alerted me, but let's say it again. 18 years old and stupid. She invited me in and I asked to use the shower quick. So I get undressed in the bathroom and I hop in the shower. She started to take her top off and I told her, 
That's okay, I won't be long. So she goes and waits on the bed watching Steve Wilkos. I get out of the shower and wrap a towel around my waist. I came out of the bathroom, Randy as a dog, looked at her and asked if she was ready. She sprawled out onto the bed and then says, Donations are due up front. At this point, all the red flags that should have gone off did as I realized the situation I was in. My face dropped as I faced the television. I nervously told her that I didn't have any money. She got up and started screaming at me and then threw my clothes and a bag at me. I got dressed and actually apologized for wasting her time. So I leave her room and start heading back to my GED class. Before I was out to the parking lot, a guy in a green punch bug calls me over to him. I try to ignore him and I walk past him until he shouted to get my attention. So I walk to the driver's side of this guy's car and he starts talking to me. Now this guy looked sketchy and I just figured he was the woman's pimp. So he's talking to me with his left arm up on his door and his right arm down at his side holding a damn pistol. At this point, I'm almost certain I'm going to get shot. He says to me, So why would you come here knowing that you don't have any money? I explained as calmly as I could that I wasn't aware of the situation. This guy then pulls his arm up a little bit to show me his gun, and he says, I have messages between you and her saying that you had money for her. Now, like I said earlier, I never told this woman I had any money. So this guy decides to lower his gun and says to me, You're lucky you came to one of my girls. Other girls would have stabbed you with a broken crack pipe. I see you're pretty young, so I'll let you off with a warning this time. He then motioned me to be on my way. But you bet your ass I kept looking back to make sure I wasn't about to be shot from behind. Obviously, as one might imagine, I never met up with anybody from Craigslist ever again. TLDR I unknowingly met up with a hooker, and her pimp brandished a gun at me and let me off with a warning. But just the same, Red Roof Hooker and her pimp, let's not meet again. About two years ago, I moved into a new apartment. The walls were very thin, and because of the fire safety laws in my city, my bedroom had one window, which led into the living room, and none with outside access. The window will be important to the story later, I promise. Anyway, it was three bedrooms, one for me, one for the master tenant, and one spare, which at the time was rented out by a pretty friendly guy. Well, friendly guy had issues with his work visa and had to move back to Canada last minute, leaving us about two weeks to find another roommate. Our quickest and easiest option was Craigslist. Due to my work schedule, I had no part in the selection process, but was content when the new roommate moved in a little later. He seemed a bit off, but friendly. He was a very tall, large guy but pretty quiet, and not someone I wanted to go out of my way to hang out with, but it was okay to be around and be cordial with. About two weeks into his move, the master tenant left for Hawaii, leaving him and I alone in the home for the month-long duration of his stay. For the first few days, things are normal. All of a sudden, about four days into the trip, I am awoken at about 8 a.m., to a frantic knocking at my door. Roommate. We'll call him Kyle. He's standing there when I open up, and he looks frazzled. He looks me dead in the eye, and says, So, do you want to tell me what went on last night? To which I was shocked and confused, because I'd come home from work at about 9pm, and immediately showered and went to bed. I explain this to him, and he tells me that he heard me screaming and arguing with someone in my room, that he saw me in the side alley of the window, arguing with our landlord, whom I'd never even seen at that point. 
He also said that he heard people coming in and out of our house. I tell him, no way, none of that ever happened. After staring at me for a little longer, he leaves and doesn't bring it up again. The following morning, I wake up to the same thing. This time, he says he saw me arguing with my boyfriend. I was single at the time. He had seen me talking with our roommate, who was in Hawaii, and asking me for the badge number of the officer I'd spoken to, since he had apparently seen me talking to a bunch of police as well. This time, I get angry and more or less tell him to cut this shit out because I'm not doing anything and don't know what he's talking about. He gets a weird look on his face and says, I think I had a seizure in my sleep. The next time it happens, call an ambulance. And he leaves for a bit, only to start knocking again about an hour later. And when I open up, Kyle repeats the exact same story verbatim. This happens once more, before I tell him to leave me the hell alone and leave for work. I go to work as normal, and I'm reluctant to return that night, but I'm too tired to switch to an alternate location. That, in itself, was a big mistake. At about 1am, I wake up to slamming doors. Kyle is pacing back and forth between his bedroom, the living room, and out the front door walking in and out of each room, turning the lights on and off, mumbling angrily and slamming the doors. I can see his figure pacing back and forth through the frosted window in my room that leads to the living room. Since my room is dark, he cannot see inside. Suddenly, he screams, I can't live like this. Why are you doing this to me? I think he's on the phone and I don't respond. A few moments later, he screams my name repeatedly and I realize he's directing it towards me. Now I knew I had to get the hell out of there, so I very quietly creep out of the bed and start getting dressed and packing a bag of clothes for work in the morning. I am almost done when he screams, I hear you, and charges over to my room, slapping the wall next to my door but not touching the door itself. I look towards my window and see his shadow lean all the way forward, pressing his ear against the glass. I was terrified and I sat completely still, unmoving. He eventually screams my name again and moves away from the window and I hear him start pacing between rooms again. Now, my shoes are kept on a rack outside my door and not inside my room, so I know that when I leave, I'm going to need a moment to put them on. I decide to wait until his pacing takes him out of the front door again, at which time I plan to grab my shoes, put them on, and run. As I'm formulating this plan, the pacing stops. He screams, Do you want to fight about this? Come out right now and we'll fight, I swear to God. I'm very small, I'm a five foot girl, and this guy is easily three times my size, so I'm definitely not looking to fight, thanks. After a few minutes, he turns off all the lights, and I hear the door to his room open and close, then followed by silence. I wait for a moment to be sure I can't hear any movement and then decide to take my chance. I took a breath and pulled my door open quickly. I step out and grab my shoes before I look up a second later and I see him standing shirtless with just a pair of boxers and sock on in the dark of the hallway. His arms hung slightly outward in an awkward position. He says in a low, calm voice, Ma'am, we need to talk. That was a hard no from me, so I grab my shoes and run out the door with them in hand. I run about a half block barefoot before I stop to put them on. When I look back, he is standing in the porch light of our front door, watching me run, but not moving. Luckily, 
I had a friend who lived two blocks away, and I had their spare key, so I let myself in and crashed there for the evening, and that's where I stayed for the following week or so while we worked things out with the master tenant, and Kyle agreed to move out within the week. He says he doesn't remember anything that happened, or wasn't sure if it was real or not, but if I said that's what went down, then it must be real. The day Kyle left, he sends me a photo of the house key sitting on the table, and says, I'm out, nothing else. I take a friend over there with me to scout it out, and ensure that he has actually left. When we get there, we discover that not only had he left a ton of food and furniture, but he had ripped all the fire alarms out of the ceilings. He had unscrewed and removed the deadbolt to the front door, and left them lined up neatly on the front table. We then realized that my front door can only lock by using a key from the outside and it had been locked when we arrived, meaning that Kyle still had a key. Needless to say, we called the locksmith immediately. Even after changing the locks, I was still terrified to stay there alone afterwards and I never went to sleep at night without barricading the doors with chairs as well as other furniture. But to this very day, I still fear for his safety. He was obviously psychologically unstable, but also wonder what could have happened if I hadn't been as lucky as I was. So my fiancé and I have been on the lookout for a kitten to accompany our three-month-old kitten that we already have. We searched and searched. Until one day he said to me, let's look on Craigslist. So I did. We found the perfect one, but the only problem was it was two and a half hours away from our home. I inquired about it around 10.30pm. I know it was late, but almost immediately I got a response. She sounded very nice over text message and asked to see where I lived so that she would feel settled about the kitten living with us. She also insisted on going to their house. I know I should have just dropped it. At the time, I thought nothing of it though. So I sent them a video and we set up a time for the next day to meet. The next day arrived. I wasn't going to take my fiance, but he insisted on coming along with me because he wanted to be my protection just in case, since Craigslist is pretty sketchy. So we drove two and a half hours on our way there. As we were on our way there, I was texting this girl that we would get there on time, and she responded, Great, see you then. We arrived to the home, me in the driver's seat, and my fiancé in the passenger seat with the window down. I texted the girl, and I got no response. I called, and no response either. I ended up calling five times and texting in the course of an hour, and no response. I went up to the house and knocked on the door, but there was nothing. There was a car in the driveway, but no response from the number or the door. We got there at 6.30 and waited until almost 8. Nothing. The neighbor came out asking what was wrong. I said I'm here since I inquired about a kitten, and she said, A kitten? I said, Yes, it was an ad on Craigslist. She said, no one has kittens in this home. I showed her the ad, and she said, Oh, I know them. They are very sketchy people, and they don't own any cats. I just helped them move their furniture yesterday. So I said, Well, on their ad, it says that they have to get rid of their kittens since their new place doesn't allow pets. So the neighbor said, That's impossible. I have a dog, and so does the next door over. I immediately found this creepy and assumed the neighbor was also in on something since it was so creepy and I was feeling anxious as well. I thanked her and left along with my fiance. Literally immediately when we pulled out of the street, I got a text from the girl saying, I'm just now getting your messages. Something must be wrong with my phone. Did you still want the kitten or no? I didn't answer and we headed back home. 
What I don't understand is that they didn't get any money from me, but they asked me to show up not knowing I'd be with my fiancé. I had a bad feeling about it. What did they want from me? I guess I'll never know. I just moved into a new house over the weekend and just paid the first month's rent. I signed a year lease. The house itself is okay for being built in the 30s. Lots of work to be done. Weird layout. Unfinished porch. Okay, it's a crappy house. But I had to take what I could get. When I saw the house posted on Craigslist, I immediately called the number listed and asked if I could view it that day or another day during the week. Right off the bat, the dude gives me a bad vibe. Not really creepy yet, but definitely annoying. We arranged to meet that Saturday so he could show me the inside of the house. He texted me every day, multiple times, to make sure you're absolutely certain you want to view the house, because I don't want my time to be wasted. I assured him several times that I literally live five minutes away and I will be there on Saturday, no questions asked. I should mention I found the house for myself and my elderly father, who is in a wheelchair. The landlord was out in the yard waiting with a huge smile on his face. I waved hello and then went around to my passenger side door so I could help my father out of the car and into his chair. The landlord's face immediately changes to a scowl. As we approach him, my dad holds his hand out for a handshake when he just looks at me and says, I thought it was just you, while completely ignoring my dad. I awkwardly try to explain I didn't think to mention it since he didn't ask, so he goes ahead and shows us the house. It's livable, so we give him the deposit. All is well. We moved over the weekend and paid the rent on the 6th. The landlord told me he would need access to the house today so he could do some plumbing work. I say no worries, but I'll be at work, so I'll leave the key above the door. I typically get off at around 12.30 and told him as such. At around 10, he texted me again, wanting me to confirm that I was absolutely not going to be there before 12.30 because of a safety hazard. I say yes, I'll be there after 12.30. Well, actually, I ended up getting off pretty early. I was headed home at 11, and I figured I'd just pop my head in and tell the landlord I was here, but I would stay outside. Now, remember when I said the layout of the house was weird? It's because the front door leads directly into a bedroom. This is my bedroom. There's another door to the left, and that's the living room, which leads into the kitchen and back room and bathroom. So I turn the doorknob, and it's unlocked. When I walked in, all I see is my landlord just hightailing it out of my room, through the living room, kitchen, back room, and out the back door. I then see his car race out of my driveway, weirded out. I walk back into my bedroom, only to find my underwear drawer open and strewn about. My nightstand was open too. Now, I don't know what to do at this point, because I'm kinda just stuck here. It's hard to find housing with my credit, and even harder finding a place that is wheelchair accessible. So creepy landlord, as much as I'd like to say let's not meet again, I know I'm going to have to deal with you for 12 more months. Please, leave my underwear alone, you creep. Edit. Final update. It's been an eventful couple of days. I can't disclose a lot of information because my lawyer has advised me not to do so. However, I can say that I took your guys' advice and I bought a night vision slash motion sensor camera. This worked incredibly in my favor because I caught my landlord on camera coming to my house at 2am and trying to look into my window. We were not there. With this footage, my lawyer has pretty much assured me that things will go in my favor. I'm working on getting my father approved for disability, and several kind Redditors in my area have even offered me temporary and even permanent housing. I cannot express to you guys enough how thankful I am for all of your help. Even the people commenting negative things have helped light a fire under my ass to be proactive. So I guess this issue is resolved, or getting close to it. So this will be the last update. I appreciate all of you, and so I wish you all a wonderful night.
My name is Cory, spelt C-O-R-I, not spelt C-O-R-Y or C-O-R-E-Y. Cory, a usually feminine spelling of a name for a guy. Not that I mind much of what spelling or so on, it's what my parents gave me. A few years ago, I'd just been let go from my first job out of college. It had been pretty good money, but the company went under, so I started applying to every job I could find as you do. Indeed, Monster, even Craigslist as well. One Craigslist job in particular was based on the outskirts of the city that I lived in, but I was ready to take anything. The job in question was some basic data entry and assistant work. At least, that had been what the job listing said. I thought it was on the up and up. However, because this was one of the few Craigslist postings that had a website attached to it, it was a pretty basic website in retrospect, but the company message seemed to make it sound like they were heavily about serving the city and facilitating volunteer work as well. Within minutes of applying, I got a response inviting me for an interview that same day. However, it titled me as a Miss Corey. I was going to respond to correct them, but it read that it was an automated response so there would be no one to read it. I figured I'd just have to correct them once I got there, and again, didn't seem like a big deal. I'd gotten this once or twice before. Anyway, I drove to the location the company website was listed, and it didn't seem too out of the ordinary. It was the second floor of a small building that was sandwiched in between a pawn shop and a phone store. I didn't think too much of it, because this was a big city, and even if this is on the outskirts of the city, a job was a job. I looked up to the second floor of the outside, and I saw someone looking down at me. I couldn't make out the face, but it was a person. That much, I'm sure of. I went inside of the building and took the elevator up to the second floor and didn't find a single soul. It looked like a half-finished office floor from what I remember, with some doors opened and some locked shut, but there was simply no one to speak to, no one to inform that I was here. There was one cubicle, but one of the detachable walls had been left in another office room. There was a computer monitor in one room, but no desktop attached to it, a half-finished company banner, and a bookcase. On closer inspection of the bookcase, all the books weren't books at all, but a cardboard printing of a bunch of books, which were stacked together. I finally had too much and called the phone number that had been on the website but I heard no phone ringing from where I stood. More so, the phone I called seemed to cut my call after a ring and a half, sending me straight to voicemail, sufficiently creeped out by now, or wondering if I had stumbled on something I shouldn't have. I took the elevator down. As the elevator door closed, I heard someone muttering angrily. I thought that was a girl's name. I didn't want to stay to find out who said it, so instead, I walked right back to my car, and I drove back home, not even daring to look back up at the window of the floor that I was sure I had been scheduled for. That very evening, out of morbid curiosity, I checked Craigslist again. The posting was now gone. I looked for the website. It has been disabled. To this day, I still wonder, what or who did I stumble upon? My greatest regret was not calling the police about this. This took place summer of 2012 when I decided to sell some old games. I was looking to buy a new car, but I lacked the money. The job I had working at Target was helping, but I really wanted money quicker. Because of this, I ended up opening a Craigslist account. I went ahead and posted things like my Nintendo 64, PlayStation 2, and Game Boy Advance. All of them were in great condition, mind you. 
something my mom would of course be proud of as she always made sure I took care of my belongings. Along with the postings, I put in the description that if people needed to contact me, I could give them my email. One beginner's mistake was I had put my name and contact information, which I know now was the worst thing you could do. After a day the postings going live, I received a message from another user. They were interested in the Nintendo 64. But the only thing was they wanted to talk to me over the phone. I didn't really think much of it as I soon received a call from an unknown number. Hi, are you the gentleman who was interested in buying the Nintendo 64? He hesitates for a second as the conversation starts to go silent. I'm sorry, but were you able to hear what I said? Oh yeah, sorry, I was just thinking about something. How are you? He seemed a bit awkward and sounded like he was in his mid-40s. After a couple of sentences, I got down a business and I told him about the prices. That should have been it, but he now begins wanting to know my age, where I lived, as well as other personal information. I was starting to get a bit suspicious about this, but he says, Sorry, it's just that I have a daughter I want to get this for. I told her about all the old games I used to play, and now she wants a Nintendo 64, so I saw that listing. She's 11 years old, by the way. Now bear in mind I was 19, but it was still weird he wanted to know so much about me. Eventually some more awkward talk, and he tells me, If you include the games, I'll go ahead and take it off your hands for $150. If you want, we can meet up in person and do the exchange. Wouldn't you want me to just send it? That would be faster, right? No, 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 I have to see you. I looked at your profile. You're quite the beauty, Rachel. I froze. What did he mean by my profile? Was he talking about my picture on Craigslist? I wasn't sure, but I really started to get a bad feeling about all of this. I told him that I wasn't comfortable meeting in person, and so I insisted I could send it over the mail. But he wasn't having any of this and started telling me off saying how I let him on and how I should be sorry. Well, I had enough. I end the phone call, and I finish by blocking him in the end. On top of this, I went ahead and took the listing down. I thought that was going to be it, but a week later, I was working at Target, and that's when this man approaches me. By the way, I worked in the electronics section. The guy was around 5 foot 7, maybe around 300 pounds. He has glasses, long hair, and a ponytail, and a beard. But let me just say, the smell on him was like rotten cheese. It was bad. Anyway, he looks at me, and he looks at my name tag, and then says, I knew I would find you, Rachel. There's no need to hide from me. Forget the Nintendo 64. I'd rather have you. Yeah, that was the same person over the phone. I kid you not. This guy had gone out of his way not only to find me, but now he wanted to do who knows what. Luckily, security was walking near me, and I called them over. What happens next was this guy begins yelling, telling him I was his niece and how I needed to go with him. Funny enough, this security guard was friends with my uncle and knew he was lying out of his teeth. Mr. Creepy Guy finally seems to have enough and then takes a swing at my security guard friend. Well, you bet he stood no chance as he used to be in the Marines. He takes him down and officers are called where soon enough he's taken away. So, that's the story about how my normal Craigslist listing turned into someone finding me in real life. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of the Creepy Fox Scary Stories Podcast. If you did enjoy, then make sure to leave a like rating and leave a comment down below letting me know what you all thought. Also, if you are a first-time listener joining us for the first time, and you did enjoy, then consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell beside it. As I mentioned in the intro, we do upload some of the best true crime and scary stories content that you'll hear on YouTube, so subscribe and look forward to more content. Speaking of stories, if you yourself do have a story that you'd like to submit, then do send it in with the user submissions email on screen. That's tcfnarrations at gmail.com. Now I'd like to go ahead and give a very special thank you 
and a shout out to all my channel members. Thank you to Spunky the Nutcase, Bo, Rice and Beans, Linz, Maribel, Dread Archive, Sean, Jen, Robbie, and Susie. Thank you so much. Your support means the world, and it helps me with continuation of releasing brand new Scary Stories content and focusing more on the channel. Also, of course, thank you to the regular viewers who watch the videos, leave likes, comments, and share the videos with family and friends. Anyway, that is going to go ahead and do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast. Take care, and have yourself an amazing day.